Right, we're here in the new council offices in Times Square and with Professor Broomhead, Chief Executive of Warrington Borough Council. Stephen, Christmas hasn't come early. We, we, we are meeting earlier than usual because there's been quite a lot of things going on in the town at the moment. Uh, no more so than the concerns here in Times Square. We've got this fantastic new development, the brilliant Warrington market. I wouldn't say brilliant, but we're in brilliant Britain now. Are we still in wonderful Warrington? Yeah, we are, Gary. It's always good to talk to you. Um, I was prepared to debate issues, as you know, Gary. I know your readers are very interested in the key issues which I'll be covering in this interview. Yeah, Times Square, um, like all commercial properties, going through what's hopefully not going to be a recession, is fine, facing some challenges. We've got particular challenges over Sydney World and over you know, the gravity. Sydney World, there's no decisions on the Sydney World yet. It's been a global situation. I think they have about over a thousand cinemas globally, yeah. which the one is here. And they have, they have made, not decided to close the cinema here. And it's still, still operating and performing strongly, as I understand. Because we've got a big conference coming up here, haven't we? Yeah, it's a week, a week on Friday, it's the Warrington Business Conference. Uh, they obviously wanted to use it for other purposes and just showing films. But uh, there's no news on the city world yet. Um, if there is, we'll make sure people know the latest opportunity. And we've got the situation with gravity as well, which suddenly disappeared overnight, which yeah, we, raised a few eyebrows yeah, in the uh, town. We, we, were, we were very surprised about that. And we're just a landlord for it. It's a franchisee, or is the company? They have about 50, they have 15 sites nationally. This is one of them. And inexplicably, at the height of the children's holidays, they decided to remove all the equipment. So that matter is now in the hands of the police. Um, we are working with Gravity, and they've assured us that they, it will reopen as it was uh, in a few months' time. Every time I interview you, I always seem to be asking about the council accounts. Every time I speak to you, you say they're about to be sound, signed off, or the leader of the council tells me they're about to be signed off. The deputy leader of the council tells me they're going to be signed off, and here we are, they still haven't been signed off. And it does cause that feeling of mistrust from, from your public, the council taxpayers, when you're doing all these investments and things like that, but the, the accounts still haven't been signed off. And it, I know it's a technicality, but the people don't understand the technicalities, and... and to you it might not be a big issue, but to the people out there it is a big issue. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's about trust and understanding, isn't it? Uh, whether people believe what we're saying. Every time I said the accounts are going to be signed off, Gary, that was in really good faith. There's also then an event occurs that stops them being signed. So the latest event, and it's a national event, not just affecting here, is there needs to be evaluation of infrastructure and assets. And our, our auditors at Grand Paul are, are doing that, and they've advised me that as soon as that's done, the accounts at 1780 will then be signed off. But we don't know how long that's going to take. No, but it's a national issue, and um, I can't tell you when. Um, it's months, not, not another year, I hope. Um, uh, then we're on to the 1890 accounts, for which good progress has been made. Uh, certain individuals in the town, which they have a right to do, have made objections to those accounts. And that complicates issues. But well, the stumbling block originally with the accounts was the investment in Redwood Bank, and it was challenged by a couple of members of the public who, who carried on challenging it. Yeah. Uh, and the value has been written down. So, you know, why, why doesn't the council, why don't the councillors come out and say, yeah, we made a mistake, we did spend too much money on it? Well, why, why is more money thrown at yeah, arguing the case? Don't respect Gary, you're wrong. Uh, it wasn't written down. I mean, it, was, it is performing as to, per the business case. Most people who object sometimes don't want to understand the facts. When they're given the facts, and there's, been, there's one individual in the town who's been given a lot of facts uh, on this, doesn't accept them, goes on and on and on. So there's no issue about the Redwood Bank. It's performing to the business plan. It's made a profit last year, and there is no issues about the value of our shareholding. Well, if what that individual is saying, alleging, promoting, putting out on social media, is factually incorrect, why weren't the account signed off? They weren't signed off, not because of that. They haven't been signed off because of the latest objection. No, they were originally, the original. No, it wasn't to do with that. It wasn't to do with that. That was the inquiry that caused the delay. The reason they've not been signed off now is because of the fact that this national infrastructure market, which is a national issue. So you're still happy with the investments in Redwood Bank? Absolutely, I am. There are some individuals, a regional newspaper, uh, Gary, and um, 
who do, simply do not accept any fact that this council provides. In a democratic society, that's acceptable. But it's also somewhat of a problem when this, that person goes on and on and on about the same thing. We're using a lot of valuable council and office of time in order to, to have these fallacious conversations. But then it doesn't help these arguments and discussions when we have the situation with Together Energy. I mean, you can't sit there now and say Together Energy was a good investment. It was a good investment, Gary. Uh, uh, the fact that with 31 of the companies, it collapsed because of what happened to the whole sale energy price against the consumer price cap. It, it, it was trading more at a point. It hit a problem along with the others. One of the company board was effectively nationalised by the government. And that's costing the government billions and billions of pounds to keep it afloat. Together Energy wasn't at the size in terms of its customer base that it, it would be nationalised by the government. So do not accept it as being a failure. The matter's with the administrator. The administrator is talking to the council and to the, uh, and to the key partners about this. And we fully expect that matter to be resolved about its overall position within the next year. And then I sit here and I say this in good faith, Gary, it should land in balance, i.e. it will not have lost money. But again, there are some people in this town who want to go on and on and on about this. The smell of rat when the rat's not there, they'll they just plead and wait for the fact to emerge through proper process. But it's not just members of the public, it's the opposition have also raised serious concerns about the council's yeah, investment. that's what the opposition are here to do for the... Uh, they're here quite properly understanding the whole of the Labour uh, council, councillors to account. They're the ruling administration. They've got their own views on that. We've ex ex explained matters to them. They've had the ability to look at the administrative report. Um, that is, has been a public document. There's no problem with that. But you understand why people are getting upset about you know, or, you know, the council taking a gamble on investment. Any investment's a gamble. I do. But, uh, I would also say to you, Gary, if we had to take some of these decisions on wise investments, not a gamble, we wouldn't have had the £20 million net per year coming to the council's budget, which supports the frontline services. So those people who say we shouldn't have been doing any of this, what services would they reduce or end uh, for that £20 million that wouldn't be there? Well, it's not just, I mean, you, the £20 million figure has been brought out quite a few times over the past few years. And people can obviously see somewhere like Birchwood Park, for example, is a fantastic investment. It's in reality hardly ever likely to lose money, it's only ever going to generate more money. But it's like the, the latest investment in, in sol the solar energy farm, another £60 million of borrowed money. I mean, people just struggle to get their heads around borrowing more and more money when there's over £1.6 billion debt to try and, and make £20 million. Well, uh, it's the force. It's another gamble, isn't it, in solar energy? It's a, no, it's a wise investment, Gary. You know, we don't we don't gamble. We only make wise investment based on due diligence and a lot of evidence. Yeah, it's the fourth solar farm that we've invested in. The first two are now very profitable, um, and the third one is coming on stream now. The fourth one, which is in Doncaster, will take some time first to be built. Then will come on stream in two years' time. And I actually think investments in green energy and solar is a wise investment again because it will produce not only the net zero to help some net zero agenda, it will produce resources for the council who not have had. Those resources are there to support frontline services. That's the reason we're doing it as well as the policy agenda around net zero which is very very strong in the town. But well, you understand why people are worried and concerned about I borrowing understand. more and more money. I understand why some people are. But there's 212,000 people in this town, Gary. It's only a small minority of people who seem to always be there path to your door because you're so you further on the end of the town, Gary. They're raising these issues. Most vast majority of people out there are not concerned, but they would be concerned if 20 million pounds worth of service cuts were made by the council and they didn't have the service which had to close the ledger centre and couldn't cut the grass, they couldn't repair the roads, and so on. Those are the sort of things people would be concerned. But we talk, I mean, you, you recently had to uh, put, a, I think it was 2.5 million into live wire to, to keep the leisure centres going because of the increased fuel costs. How, how do you manage to maintain that sort of situation? 
Oh, I mean, we're, we're, despite the government, we have to put money, I think, this week into supporting the consumers' energy costs. <coughs> where it's something we have to consider going forward. We we're very proud of our leisure offer. Uh, um, we're also looking, as you know, to develop uh, Bridgewater uh, High School and the leisure centre mm -hmm. there at Broomfields. Uh, Broomfields Leisure Centre. So we all wanted to maintain the services, but at the moment with the very energy prices where they are, where general inflation is, we're having to support Wyvern and not Wyvern in a particular way. Now, you've tried to convince me and our viewers that the investments that the council are making are good ones, and even the Together Energy one, where on paper it looks as though a lot of money's been lost, but you're hoping to come out with, from an even playing field with that situation. Do you accept that sometimes the council get things wrong? Of course it is. Um, uh, just like we all do in life. Oh yeah, yeah. exactly. And when we do, uh, we're, we're, saying, we're, we're saying we have. Uh, but at the moment, on the issue you raise with me, I don't say that we've been wrong. Yeah, the, the reason to do that energy uh, situation because of what happened globally with energy prices, and in the case of this one, because where they went to wholesale prices versus the, the price cap. So, do you remain positive about all the current council investments? I do. And you've not got any of them wrong? No, and um, you'll be aware that the government are looking at a number of councils in relation to the risks around their borrowing levels. We're one of the councils which they decide to have a conversation with. We really welcome those conversations about how we've invested in Birchwood Park, our investments in Redwood Bank, and some of the loans we've made actually to some bigger companies, the Hook Group for instance. Uh, we're quite pleased by that they're interested in this. We've nothing to hide, nothing to be concerned about. We want to explain it. And that's remember the government in 2014 encouraged council to be commercial. They wanted us to go out in a managed way to be entrepreneurial, and that's exactly what we've done here in London. We've seen the government actually say that they're going to come in and, and work with the council to try and help you through these difficult financial times. Has anything happened along no, the way? No, that's intervention I think you're talking about that you've seen in places such as in Slough, in Croydon and in Liverpool. Uh, uh, this is a conversation, not the intervention we're having with the government. At the moment the government are happy with the way we've gone about our, our business planning, our governance and our decision making. It's a conversation that I say I welcome. Okay. Well, normally in our interviews, I, I also talk to you about Warrington Wolves, and I'd like to try and visit, finish the interview on a positive note, but sadly it's been a very uh, trying season for the Wolves. It's been a, a very trying season, but one I think we can learn a lot from. Um, a lot of learning lessons. Um, uh, we've had meetings of the board of the club. I'm still the vice chairman of the club to talk about the learning lessons, which range from our approaches to recruitment, to the way in which we've handled those players who've been leaving in terms of when their contracts end, the whole uh, approach to coaching, the coaching facilities and our recruitment for next year which is indeed very very strong. So there's a lot of learning lessons. One of the concerns that we have of course is with inflation being what it is and the pressure on people's uh, uh, disposable income is the ability for us to get the crowds back and get that fantastic atmosphere of the Hello Jones that we've always been used to. We've made some really good signings for next year. Although it's been um, very, very challenging, I know that while walking through the town, Gary, and when we've had home losses, people were uh, wanting my head almost, and that head of Stuart the Chairman. Uh, it's been challenging, but I think for next year it's going to be really good. And as you know, Gary, it's always that year. It's always that year. Are there more new players to come in? Um, possibly, yeah. We've made a number of recruits, um, uh, it's a bit, uh, a bit of been announced, and we are looking, I think, to strengthen even further between now and the start of the new season. But of course, we've got here in October more rugby league with the World Cup, and we're looking forward to the World Cup with the arrival of Papua New Guinea, the women's game, and of course, in Wellington, we've got the disability, uh, the disability tournament as well. So the season actually doesn't really end, it carries on with the World Cup, which should be really very, very good. And hopefully see plenty of people in the Halliwell Jones supporting it. Yeah, hope so. Okay, well, uh, thanks for the catch-up today, an early Christmas present maybe, but uh, if we catch up again at Christmas, maybe you'll be able to tell me that the council accounts have been signed off. Yeah, it's might do. Do you think that's possible by Christmas? I might have a dance, Gary. <laughs> okay, thanks Stephen. Thanks, mate.